Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Um, it's now time for our uh, final keynote of PyCon UK, and it gives me great pleasure to introduce uh, Kushal and Amusha Das, who have come all the way from India uh, to give this keynote um, about communities and education exploring together. Um, I'm especially pleased that we've managed to get Kushal and Amusha here. Um, I first met Kushal online, uh, like many of us meet our friends online, um, there was an IRC channel about diversity in the Python community. And because I'm a friendly chap, when I sign into IRC, I say morning in all the channels that I'm in. Um, unfortunately, the Pi Diversity channel uh, only ever consisted of me saying morning for about a month. Um, and then this guy called Kushal uh, popped up and said, morning, back. And this, we struck up a conversation about how important it is to say morning to people when you meet them and things like that. And a few months later, uh, after having several morning-based uh, conversations with Kushal, uh, I was at uh, PyCon US in California, I think it was, uh, at the Red Hat booth. And there was a gentleman with a red hat and a camera taking photos. And we struck up a conversation. And we are having a really great, chat, really great chat. And I thought, I, I don't know this guy's name. It's like the zen of PyCon UK. I better ask this guy his name and, and looked at his badge. And it said, Kushal Das. And I said, you're not the Kushal from the Diversity Channel, are you? He said, what? You're not Nicholas, are you? I said, yes, <laughs> yes. And we like this. <laughs> so it is through the Python community, through uh, the internet, that, that we struck up a friendship. And it, gave, it gives me great pleasure, and it's rather appropriate, that the talk today is about communities and education and exploring together. So uh, welcome to our speakers. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, let me tell you a story today. 2011 October. I met this guy for this greatest Indian invention for the lazy people, arranged marriage. He carries a very common profession in India, in other words, boring, uh, that in which we Indians can beat US and China together, that is producing engineers. So no excitement on my part. And on the top of that, he started talking to me, did try to impress me, talking about Python. And, and to, my, to my utmost surprise, that is neither a snake, nor a comedy group, but a programming language. Really? So before going to the story further, uh, let me introduce you with that man who was trying to impress me that day. Kushal. Uh, good morning once again. So I am a code developer of the C Python project, that is the Python programming language. I'm also a mem community member and a director at Python Software Foundation. Um, I hope uh, most of you already heard about Python Software Foundation or PSF. If you are not, please meet any one of us like from the community after the talk or during the talk, maybe, yeah. Um, on the other side, I am a staff member at the Freedom of the Press Foundation, uh, where we protect and defend adversarial journalism in the 21st century. And as you already heard, the girl I tried to impress, uh, which I believe worked, um, <laughs> is next. Hi, I'm Anvesha. Uh, I'm a Pi Lady. I'm the organizer of Pi Lady's Pune. I use Python to shape my legal projects. I'm a blogger at Python Software Foundation. I maintain my personal blog at anveshadas.in where I translate legalese to English. I'm an active FOSS user, a dancer, and a mother to a toddler whose name is Pi. So I am the mother of Pi. <laughs> and I'm a lawyer, but not your lawyer. Therefore, none of the portions of my talk should be considered as a legal advice. <laughs> so now I have a question for Kushal. Why were you trying to impress me with Python? Why Python? To 
answer this question, I'm actually going to go back a few more years in life. So I actually had my first uh, personal computer in 2001. Before that, in, from 1990s, I believe, every year for only a few hours, I used to see a Commodore 64, which maybe many of you already used. So from 2001, I started uh, my engineering studies. And somehow, I was marked as the Linux expert in the college. Why? Because I knew two questions, or rather, two answers. Number one, how to mount a Windows partition? You know, <laughs> very tricky. Number two, how to play a MP3 song on a Linux box? Yay! Uh, mostly because I had that XMMS-MP3 RPM package with me, and I only knew how to install it. Um, I never knew what RPM was, but I knew that I have to type this command. So following that, in 2004, uh, I started understanding the words like communities, contribution, and how people and things actually work together. So I started this organization called uh, DGPLUG, Durgapur Linux Users Group. Uh, it's an, as you can understand from the name, it's a Linux user group. And I came up with the idea of a group, uh, mostly because of two reasons. Number one, everyone else was doing it, so it must be cool. <laughs> and the second thing was uh, much more important as a person. That is, learn yourself and teach others. That was the motto I came up with in the very beginning when we started the group. Because I was from a remote place in India, and there was not many people, as I said, who knew about Linux or things in this part of technology. So the only way I found that I can improve myself if I roam around or have friends who knows more than me. And the only way I can be in a state, in a local community at least, if we all can try to learn together and help others to learn the same knowledge. So that's where this Linux user group of uh, Durgapur we started. But um, back, even now, or back in those days, asking people to learn yourself and actually try to teach others was not that easy. Uh, more than anything else, it had a combination of various social and um, cultural differences from between that line and the way we grew up in our society. To me, uh, give you an example. When I first stepped into a courtroom, I never felt awkward. It, it was more like my classroom. In, uh, in our classrooms, the teachers were the judges and the students were the mere audience. We were not allowed to ask questions. We were not allowed to say, no, I think you may be wrong. Failing is the heinous of all crimes. And knowledge is measured by grades. So here is a barrier bigger barrier we are trying to break with these communities and maybe he tried to break with DGPLUG. Uh, you cannot believe that how difficult it is to inform a, or tell a student that it's okay to ask questions because uh, from the childhood we have been taught to not to ask questions back to your teacher or anyone who is older than you like do not look up or do not ask questions. So, uh, 2005, I came out of the college and started working. And meanwhile, we saw a lot of this Linux user, Linux user groups uh, throughout India. And I, all, uh, I came to the city which is known as Indian Silicon Valley, Bangalore. And there, I met another group, Bank Pipers. From the name, you can imagine it has something to do with Python. And that was my first uh, interaction with, to a direct Python community. And Bank Paper is still there. It's running. It's one of the biggest, I think, the biggest uh, physical meetup group in India as far as com Python community is concerned. Uh, over 10 years, it's running. And over the years past, we started seeing the smaller groups coming up. Correct. Now we know we have a name for it and also a company, Meetups. So not only about Python, but all the different technologies, they slowly started coming up. People started meeting with each other. But um, this time, from 2005 and onwards, uh, there was another thing happened over internet. 
Google Summer of Code. I hope you all already heard about this particular project. And it became a super huge thing in India. In many colleges, many places, we never managed to break into as a community. We never managed to tell them why they should learn some technology. Uh, maybe in a great way, maybe in a sad manner, uh, the money associated with Google Summer of Code actually helped many people to see that they can have a better future if they work on upstream communities, upstream projects. But while in, uh, I was a mentor for Fedora project during uh, these days, like 2006, 2007, this time, and we started seeing a common practice or a common feature which is actually missing from all the students who are participating in Summer of Code. Uh, that is the basic idea or the basic knowledge about communities, how things actually work together. People knew about programming. You ask them to solve a code, write some algorithm, all of them can do that. Uh, as she already mentioned, we have, like I think, more than a million engineers coming out of engineering colleges. So yeah, and most of them learn programming in the college. So they all can write code, but if you ask them anything else to the whole ecosystem, they never knew. Now, in 2008, um, I believe, I was trying to figure out how can we improve this. And as you can understand, by this time I'm out of my, uh, the place where I studied. So the Linux user group is more on IRC and on mailing list for me. So this is something came up, DigiPLG summer training. So my idea was to provide a similar kind of training like G-Shock but this will be much more training manner. That means we'll help people to learn or, or gather all the necessary knowledge and tools and ideas so that they can go out and start working in various upstream communities. I was not sure about it because I know people go to GSOC because it's GSOC and here I am uh, talking to a few of my friends over internet and want to start this new thing. But when I wrote um, the first email to different mailing list announcing this project, I got a very positive feedback. There is another person, uh, Shakti Kannan, uh, who, aka Mbuff on IRC and on internet. He just jumped in and I already knew him as a, one of the best mentor in India for free software projects. And together and few other friends from the communities, we started this particular thing which we call DigiPLG Summer Training, where we help people to become a contributor. And as you can see in the URL below, uh, that shows up that we already went through 10 years. Um, so I'm going to talk actually a little bit more about this training and what we do, and how we do it. Uh, we had participants from all across the world. Uh, actually from South Korea to West Coast, and we had people from Australia joining us too. To give you an, and uh, I don't know how many of you know about IRC, but that's not a hashtag, that's the channel name. <laughs> uh, you can use it as a hashtag on Twitter too, and uh, has DGPLUG. So we had people, as I mentioned, from South Korea, Singapore, India, of course, a majority of them. We had people from all across Europe, uh, we, a couple of years back, we had a music student from London who joined our training because he wanted to see how open source works and how he can use Python to his daily life. In the same way, later on, we found his girlfriend also joined us a couple of years later. Previously, we found uh, like parents joining along with their kids to learn about this thing called community and contribution. Just move mouse, mouse pointer. So I'm going to uh, talk a little in depth. So this is the, how the page looks like in 2017. Uh, we use a simple form and a mailing list as a place of communication. As you can see, uh, yeah, Sakti Kannan came up with this fancy title, which still works. The whole idea of the training is to help people to start contributing upstream. 
You can see we have a probable starting time, but we don't have a ending time. Why? Because I don't think we ever closed any of our programs in any year. The programs continues. The idea is you as a participant will come to on, come online on the IRC channel every day and participate there communicating with others. You will learn something, you will teach others. That's why we start in a particular day, but we never end. Because this online community, there is no end to it, correct? We all are friends now. So the same way, DigiBillage worked as a meeting place from various people all across the world. Objectives. You can see uh, we are talking about spreading the hacker ethics, free software technologies, and it's about gaining knowledge. And this is the most important thing we found out with doing various experiments and trying things. List of things to teach or list of things to start working with. The first one is the most important for us, communication skills. Uh, as you may already know, um, if, I'm look, if I say about India, then we have more than 23 official languages. That's correct. But the only way we all can communicate at, as Indians is English. That's the standard language almost everyone can be able to say or listen to. So, but the online communities communicate in a different way, correct? We use IRC, we use mailing list. So it's very important to talk about how to reply to emails. Um, can you please raise hand if you are in any mailing list, community mailing list? It's very, oh, uh, it's very easy to identify an Indian there, at least Indian student there, rather. The emails will always start as dear sir slash madam. Uh, that's actually not our fault. That's how we learn to write letters. And we just follow the things we learned in the English grammar class into the online community. So it takes time to break that barrier and to start talking about, you know, things like bottom posting to things like do not reply in or write emails in HTML because there is a lot of us who use command line tools to read emails. And the second most important thing, uh, I'm not sure if we write it directly there, is about touch typing. I don't know how many of you actually regularly teach people, like we mostly handle kids with uh, above 16, 17 years old, but typing is the most difficult thing for mo all, almost all of them. Everyone knows how to type with fingers, but almost no one knows how to do touch typing. So we focus on typing. Then we slowly g grow up on different technologies and ideas they can learn. We spend a lot of time with documentation, why writing things matters, why communicating matters. Previously, we tried to teach C over IRC, the C programming language, and learned very fast that debugging sec faults over IRC, just not possible. <laughs> and while training others who are coming from different backgrounds, it's very important to keep listening to them. Uh, we try to tell, try to break that idea that you can still ask a question. No question is stupid. But at the same time, to understand what are the problems others are facing, sometimes it becomes difficult. To give you an example, uh, we were teach, uh, I don't remember which year, maybe 2011, uh, we were teaching cell commands. <coughs> yeah, I hope all of you know about the cat command, correct, which shows the content of a file. So we asked the students or the participants to see cat slash etc slash red hat hyphen release. It will show you the content of the file. Everyone said, worked. One particular person was not happy about it. He said, it's not working. He continuously kept saying that. And then we asked, what are you seeing? It's magically telling me what my computer is running, but it's not showing me the content of the file. Uh, if you don't know the content of the file, that's the name of the operating system or the distribution you're using. So he was kind of stunned to see the distribution name in a file. <coughs> so you have to keep these small things in mind. Uh, like this year, we started with 150 people. Uh, the, as I said, the training is still going on over three months. 
And if I come down a little bit below, there are something special called guest sessions, where we invite people all across the world to come and talk about their life, how everyone started from zero, that is level zero. Nobody knew anything when they were born, correct? Everyone started gathering those knowledge one by one. And because it's on internet, thanks to the community, we every year we manage to get more and more people coming into the sessions and teaching about various things like artwork, like documentation, like licenses for artwork, like Python. And okay, I meant, forgot to mention one thing. Uh, though Python is our primary language which we work on, but we try not to teach Python. Our goal is to ask the participants to solve their daily life problems using this thing called Python. For example, you want to upload 10 of your photos to Facebook, Twitter, or any other social media. Why don't you do it Is writing your own code? You can still show it off to all your friends, like, hey, I wrote this, in a similar way. And last year, uh, Guido, as you all know, our dear BDFL of the programming language community, uh, he actually agreed to come online on IRC after 20 years to teach and talk about Python, which was a great thing. And, but a, before, a week before the actual session, he came and asked, can you please show me how to do this IRC? He forgot, which was okay. And then he picked up and he came on the has DGPLUG channel just to say hi. So, when he came into the set and said, hi, I'm Guido. And a couple of people actually asked him, hey Guido, so what do you do? <laughs> and he was very patient and explained what he's working on. And few of them actually, after that, uh, searched his name, came back running to me on PM, that is private message on IRC, and like, oh my God, what should I do now? <laughs> so we had to explain, it's perfectly okay not to know everyone in the world. You will meet people, you will remember the name, or maybe you will forget, but that's perfectly okay. Um, well, mouse pointer. So if I can, so, So this is the IRC channel. Uh, we have around 160 people, uh, 16 people online right now, and they are discussing things at right there. Um. <laughs> so this is how we actually run the sessions. Uh, we use IRC because it's. It's very simple, it's plain text based. It works on very low bandwidth situation. So, you can say hi, but anyway. <laughs> As I said, we are going on for over 10 years. So I asked, before coming here, I asked around, uh, can we set up like the five major points why we are still successful? Why we can say that we are the highest uh, concentrated upstream contributors in India, at least, though most of our current participants are from outside India. Uh, we have people even from Nigeria Python community who regularly come and attend the sessions and talk to others. So these are the five points we came up with. Actually, Sakti Kannan came up with the terms. I, we just discussed about it. The first and the most major point was IRC. I don't know about internet situation in England or rest of the UK, but it's still not that great in India. And IRC is something which just works even on a 2G connection over a mobile phone. So it really helped us to reach to various places where a video course or any other medium was not available. Regular meetings, we are on IRC, means we are always almost available. And as I said, we start with everyday sessions. So we start around 7 p.m. in Indian time. Sometimes we went up to 2 a.m. That sounds scary, but it's perfectly okay if you're sitting back at home and working on things. Addressing the basics, important point. Approachable mentors. That's again one of the 
the most signing part of being in the community and we the pythonistas the python community can be very proud about this almost all the person i ever met in this community are very approachable we can ask any question we can say maybe wrong things but we will be okay we can say that i am sorry i said something wrong and we can fix our error and that was the same thing with online things and we had a flat structure means there is no single mentor or mentee even a single mentor can be a mentee next day and along with this whole thing we also again and again understood why documentation is very important why writing down your blog post every day whatever you are learning is important uh, the first link irc logs if you go there you will find a uh, 10 years IRC logs of all the sessions how people actually spoke about so if in case you want to you'll be interested to do a session you can read your experience there I forgot to upload 2015 logs till now <laughs> I have it in my computer I'll someday I'll do that and we also create managed to create two books out of it where the participants actually participated to update the books to fix the errors first one is the Python book called Python for you and me uh, the second one we just started this year called uh, Linux command line for you and me uh, following the same style of book names uh, both of them are available on github so th and you can see the history how the participants after learning git they actually start contributing to the book from which they are learning these things uh, now after talking about digipology for such a long time i'm going to actually pass across to anvesha to talk about something different but I can say almost in the similar way and the same story. I came into the whole story much after, uh, in 2016, after giving birth to Pi. I started reading about open source and free software, especially the legal aspects while breastfeeding Pi because you ha don't have anything to do. Your hands are free. So, uh, but I could not understand a bit. Library to me was a room full of books not the accumulation of some gibberish texts. So I understand I need to learn programming to understand the legal aspect of the open source world. I started with C and with my little intelligence and no intention to learn programming, I failed miserably. Therefore, very gracefully shifted to English like Python. And he was my first teacher. And for some strange reasons, all our sessions used to turn up to be a domestic turbulence. Uh, after, which, <coughs> after which the teacher had to go to bed hungry and the student used to gorge in her favorite dishes. <laughs> so for the, uh, for, to save him from hunger and for my inner peace. And most importantly, to be with friends, along uh, with the, to be with the people, with the same minded people and to learn from each other to share knowledge with each other. I wanted to be in a group where I can sit and uh, learn something new. So uh, I searched for Pi Ladies. Yeah, Pi Ladies, if you don't know, Pi, we are a global mentorship group uh, encouraging women from all across the world um, to become a part of the Python open source community. And I thought, I'm in India, we might not have a Pi Ladies chapter, but no, we do have a Pi Ladies Pune over there. But it was not active. And necessity is the mother and motivation of all invention. I rebooted Pi Ladies Pune. After I sent the first mail, I was very happy to announce the first meetup. And I thought, oh, we are good to go now. It's the starting of a smooth journey, but it was not. I understand very fast that running a technical group, the technical difficulties are not there much. The, the problem is with the social difficulties, the social aspects, uh, the things I needed to take care. The first thing I needed to make sure that people know there is a thing, there is a group called Pi Ladies. Pi Ladies do have a chapter in Pune and we are having our regular meetups. I started visiting universities, education, other educational institutions, IT companies, 
and also uh, whenever I used to meet people in say in a market, I used to, uh, okay, um, are you interested in computers? Are you uh, interested in having fun with computers? If yes, uh, I have a small little information for you. We have this fine group called Pai Ladies Pune. You may want to join. Here goes the details. And because united we stand. And here I would, um, I, I feel I'm very lucky that I have these wonderful friends from the very beginning on whom I can lean on. Here I would like to take the names of other uh, or co-organizers of Pai Ladies Pune, Nisha and Rupali. Rupali from Red Hat and Nisha is the maker from the Hackerspace Reserve Bit. Uh, they are not only giving us the space but taking care of various aspects to run Pai Ladies successfully at my, our place. After uh, with that comes the second point, personal touch. So after a few meetups, uh, I suddenly saw the numbers of the attendees were going down. Then it struck me for the first time, these attendees are not only numbers, they are creatures of f flesh and blood. We needed to give something more than just to say hi in, uh, at the beginning of the meetup and say bye, uh, see you in the next meet. Uh, we needed something better than this, a personal touch. So what I tried to do, what I did actually, I tried to build a personal connection with each, uh, each one of them. We stayed in constant touch. Um, con uh, I used before and after every meetup, I used to just, uh, I used to have a conversation that, what are the things you, uh, you learned? What are the, do you have a new project idea? Do you want to share them with us? Can we work together on them? Or, um, or what are the things uh, uh, we can change to give you a very nice experience in Pai Ladies Pune? We, uh, we were there for each other all the time. We are there for each other all the time. Um, we started cheering them in their success, encouraging them in failure. Be their friends and have them as friends. So when they are coming to the meetups, now they are not coming just to learn something or just to work on something. They're coming to meet friends. We all are anxious, when will that day come when we'll be able to meet friends? And while meeting friends, we are also will be able to learn something from each other and have fun while coding. That is the main goal. As Kushal said, it is very important to learn syntaxes. It is very important to learn coding. It's very important to learn Python, but the most important thing is that you have to know how to survive in the cyberspace. It is important to know the environment you are living in. So here we followed the DGPLUG model as it was handy with us. And uh, we, not only, we are not only having sessions on Python, we are having sessions on Git, as you said, touch typing, very important. Uh, how to reply to an email and not to top post uh, and also, of course, about licensing the lawyer me. <clears throat> so the next thing I'm going to talk about is very, very close to my heart topic. The help uh, which we got from the hardware. So um, I was a half a year old coder and um, I didn't really felt the difference between a while loop and a for loop. I was writing that, successfully implementing that, but I never felt it. But a tiny LED made me understanding, made me understand it easily, made me felt, I could feel it with that LED. And that opened the gate of unknown. It was an entrance to this magic world. And um, I, I noticed that oh, whenever we are watching something, watching an LED display, or but making something to say something. It, it is a magic. We are, we are being able to understand things better. Why? Because what we are doing, we are taking this syntaxes from mere memorization and placing it over 
to experiencing through watching and hearing what is happening. Hardware have a, like, they have a very special impact. They have a huge impact on creating people's mindset, changing people's mindset. Um, for shaping their creativity, flourish their creativity, and also to learn concept, understand new theories. So I thought, why not I share this thing with my Pi Ladies friends? So we took the refuge of ESP8266 and Microbits, uh, very gracefully given to us by our generous friend Nicholas, as uh, famously known as Entol. <laughs> so, we started it, uh, we had fun. It gave us a space out of the black and green, green the confined space. We had our own space. We, uh, we could experience our mistake and learn from those mistakes, which were the most important part. And presently, in, um, in India, the Pi Ladies is coming up. We have a stable group. Uh, when I started a year back, it was only Pi Ladies Pune, and now new chapters are coming. Uh, I, whenever I'm meeting people, even in PyCon UK, last night I was telling a girl, why don't you start a Pi Ladies Delhi chapter? You are there in Delhi. She said, okay, fine. So another chapter is coming up. <laughs> another, hopefully. <laughs> Yay for Pi Ladies Delhi. <laughs> Uh, so, another two or three chapters will be coming up, hopefully, in the next few months. And we are growing. But uh, with all the groups, we, we both are having our problems with sustainability, issues with sustainability. And this is the, I believe, the biggest issue with any uh, group, the term sustainability. It took us time to build mindset of people to build or to help grow the next generation of leaders who can take on the things growing. Uh, somehow I keep reading a lot of uh, army or military uh, biographies and there we fall, I keep reading that people follow strict rules but at the same time people actually trust others to do their work. So having that mindset, that trusting rest of the community, that they will do, they will do the things for the good is important. And it's always important to make sure that you are growing the next set of leaders. Like in Digibiology, after 10 years, we have a large number of people all across the world whom we can trust with. If you go to the channel, you'll find names like Sayan Chaudhuri, uh, Chandan Kumar, who are, you can see them with the op power. You can see them helping each and every one as people ask questions. There are new generation, like uh, a girl came up, I think a year, now two years back, uh, from almost nowhere, said, I want to work on these things. Uh, her name is Trishna Guha. Within a year, or just after a year, she actually started working for Ansible as an app core developer for the Ansible project, which is a big thing for us to see. And these people, these youngsters are our major resource. As the community members who are part of community, it is our duty to make sure that we train and help the next generation to make sure that we have a sustainable community altogether. But at the same time, it is important to remember that people, there are people who will always ask questions on every point. Why this light is yellow? Why not? Isn't it supposed to be white? Things like that. And I believe C wants to share one experience and, yeah. So Pi Ladies, we are fighting a different battle altogether. Yes, we do have certain uh, normal things, having a group, like uh, all the physical groups, like uh, groups in the physical world has. But we are fighting a different battle. <clears throat> it's very unfortunate. I get, we get this this respectful, this graceful and negative comments every now and then. It is very unfortunate the first battle we had to fight is to change the mindset, the thinking of the people. Whenever we uh, imagine a lawyer, it's a person with a black robe, a doctor is with a white gown, a, a tailor with a sewing machine and likewise 
a coder, a programmer should be a person with a computer. But the truth is nothing close to that even. We think of a person with a diff particular face, sex and color. I don't understand this thing. Why would will we be judged every point of time just being, just not being into a category, a particular category of homo sapiens? I'm not sure what is the, ca what is the situation is in UK right now, but in, in India uh, and some other parts of the world, this is a huge problem. But I'm very lucky that I am a part of this wonderful community where people do stand for each other. While in this case, I was very disappointed with this. I never replied, but someone else from the community replied for me. And that gave me the confidence, confidence, yes. I might not be wrong. And also we um, have the, as I mentioned in the beginning, we do have normal problems or with or, like all other groups uh, we do have a problem with sponsorship uh, but I guess the the groups who which are present in the digital world like DGPLUG they don't have to really face that very often maybe uh, true uh, but uh, before saying that thank you Carol for the reply <laughs> So having a group in the digital world is actually easier because almost for, we never required money except helping out few students to participate in different PyCons and uh, maybe the server cost or the web hosting, etc. But running a group in a physical location is always much more difficult. It requires help from companies or the people who can help. So please keep that in mind uh, as a point that people will always need some help. Uh, this part brings to the last section of the talk, which I believe is the most important part of whatever things we talked about for the last, I don't know, 40 minutes. The point is about giving back to the community. You want to say something? Or? Actually, we think we are very lucky that we are here in this place. We are extremely ordinary people, but very special, extraordinary thing happened to us. Python, the community. You will, f you will have inspirations, teachers, mentors, friends everywhere in this one place, the community. And also in this one place, as Peter says, the holy convocation of the tribe called Pythonistas. So you'll be like, I, I was impressed to see Josh. I, he is my biggest hero now. Kushal, you failed. <laughs> <laughs> There's so, an, a wonderful quote from Brett Cannon that uh, came for the language and stayed for the community. That flipped in my case. I came for my friends and sticked here. Though I am not very good, but still whenever I am having some problem, let me solve this. I can ask him. He's my friend. I am here for friends. Not maybe not for the language, but for the community. So I, I want to ask all of you to do one thing. After going back from this conference, start thinking about what can you do for the community. It doesn't have to be a big thing. It can be just helping one person giving out the information on how to come to next year's PyCon. It can be a simple thing like answering one single question in one forum or in physical world. Just think about it because we, we stand together. Uh, the community can only flourish when all of us will try to help each other and grow in a bigger sense. And it's not always about technology. Technology help us to bind together, uh, but as many times the free software movement comes up, that free software movement was and still is, is about political movement. It's not about software. We happens to see software. 
So that's exactly same in this community also. We happen to all of us love this thing called Python programming language, but we are a community of human beings. We are standing together and helping each other. Uh, with this, uh, thank you. Thanks like a lot to. for giving us this chance to thank you. stand here. Thank you. And thank you, PyCon UK, for giving us this chance to share our experience here with all of you. Thanks and a lot. Giving us this wonderful experience and new set of friends. Great, we have time for questions, yay! <laughs> Answer is, Nicholas knows everything. <laughs> so I'd, I'd, I'd like to thank you both on behalf of the uh, UK Python community for joining us uh, this week. It's been really special to have you here. You're both extraordinary people and uh, it's been uh, lovely having you around. Um, I think we've got time for two questions. Um, one over here. Are you yawning? <laughs> <laughs> Hi, um, a question. How are big companies uh, in India like TCS, um, Infosys, Cognizant, um, and other IT sourcing companies, how, are they, um, how is their attitude towards uh, these sort of initiatives? Are they willing to sponsor? Are they willing to push forward like PyLadies? Uh, could you just give us a, because I India is one of the biggest, not yeah, just the world, but like Asia's um, IT hub, so. Thank you. So, uh, so for the first time, uh, when I met uh, this um, uh, manager from a b very big company, Amdocs, I had to explain him open source, and he doesn't know that. And I actually had to mention the spelling, O-P-E-N-S-O-U-R-C-E. -E. This is the scenario. We don't... Uh, Piladies Pune, we don't have much spon sponsors. Actually, we don't have space for meetups. Um, we are very grateful to Red Hat because they are actually providing us space every month. But if they stop doing that, I guess I have to run it in and also reserved bit. We have a, a maker space in Pune. If they stop doing that, I guess I have to run it in my own apartment, which is not that big. So the sponsorship is very, very bad. And if you can help us with that, that would be really great. <laughs> and the other <laughs> part of the story is, as you may already understand, that India is a lot about bureaucracy, a lot of red tapes. So it's very easy in maybe other places, a senior person can actually you know, bypass all of things and say that this can happen. Sometimes it happens like the Python Pune group, we know that there are a few local companies who try to provide space, but it's not always true with all the big companies. And as you mentioned, the name of the companies you mentioned, uh, all of them have their own training system which they use when they hire any new students from the, fresh from the colleges. And so we think it still need a lot of time, uh, even though all of those companies are consuming open source technologies every day, it still requires a lot of messaging, a lot of policy among those big companies so that you know, they come up front to help the com different communities. Uh, if you see the sponsors list in PyCon India, PyCon Hyderabad, PyCon Pune, and all the other major PyCons which came up over the last few years in India, uh, you will see it's mostly the same sort of names together, but not much of the Indian biggies, you know, the IT service industry of India, not many. So it will still take time. Can you have a last question? Anyone? Uh, this side. Uh. Uh, hi, so I'm just curious, you mentioned the cultural aspect and uh, basically the fact that it's not polite to ask questions and to tell a teacher that they might be wrong or all of these things. Um, and you mentioned how hard it is to convince or to get people to think differently about this. Um, is this something you've tried to extend further, up, like beyond just Python? Um, is this something that's changing or is this a culture thing that's just gonna 
A4 close time, please. So uh, it has actually, I should say, twofold answers. Now we can see more and more international boards are coming in in India. And even the state boards or the country-wise national education boards, they are changing the syllabus. The style of teaching is changing. We are adapting fast from all across the world. So that if you talk to the new generation kids, they are much smarter in that way. They can communicate fast. Uh, I never spoke English before 2002, I believe. I grew up with Hollywood movies, so I can understand, but never spoke. I always knew how to read and write. But that thing is changing, as I said. Uh, most of, like, in India, it's not a problem to ask a parent to send their kids for computer or any kind of engineering, because everyone wants to be an engineer. It's one of the most stable way of earning money. So for these things, slowly we are seeing that change happening, but very slowly. And thanks to our history, plus the older history beyond 200 years, uh, the education system was built in such a way so that we were never allowed to ask questions. So yes, it's changing, but it will still take a lot of time to have that kind of big change. And I know many examples where people actually worked on free software projects and in one case failed, and other cases given the lowest marks in the exam, in the lab, because they use something which the teacher never understood at all. So, yeah. With okay. that, I think.